and I have with me in the studio I'm going to share with you. And so I encourage you to keep on watching MAVE TV. Do not go away. Today, I have with me Reverend Richard and Pastor Ebenezer. They are here to share insights on dreams with us. And so, without wasting much time, I will want to welcome Reverend Richard and um, Pastor Ebenezer. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, I would like them to introduce themselves to you, my dear friends. Uh, can you go first? Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is Ebenezer Alonge. I am a pastor, by the grace of God, I pastor David Scott Ministry International, which branches both in Nigeria and um, here in Atlanta. So I'm grateful to come on IMAF TV. I'm grateful to Pastor Evans for the opportunity to have us here. You know, and I pray that as you have been a part, as you have always been a part of these programs, and then as you are on today to listen to us, to what God wants to say through us, you will be tremendously blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mr. Richard, can you? Thank you, thank my you. brother. Thank you, uh, Pastor Evans. I am Reverend Richard uh, D. Johnson. Um, I am a Liberian and a Liberian Baptist prelate. And I'm also living here in uh, Decatur in Georgia. And it's a privilege to serve alongside uh, with MF TV as a share God word to broadcasting around the world. Thank you. Thank you, um, Pastor Eben and Reverend Richard. So uh, my first question to you is, I think this one will go to um, Pastor Ebenezer. Do you believe in dreams? Um, I think before we talk about if one believes in a thing or the other, one should even define what it is at all mm. in the first place. Yeah. So I believe um, in the context of what I believe our discussion is today, and um, in the context of Christianity, dreams and visions, you know, go pari pasu, they go together, and dreams are more like um, God's way of um, introducing or showing someone the future, you know, where God's way of showing or telling someone about what will happen, you know, either in the nearest future or in the, you know, far future, and then, um, you know, it's God's technology of revealing the future to people. You know, it's like the coding of tomorrow, you know, that God brings into today. So I believe very, very, very strongly in dreams. I believe dreams are real. I believe dreams, you know, are on many occasions God's way of telling one, you know, about what is going to happen, what will happen in the future. You know, visions are also very real and I believe very, very strongly in them. Thank you very much, Pastor Ebenezer. Um, Reverend Richard, can you please add up? Thank you, Pastor Evans. Um, Dreams for me in the context of the Bible, uh, in the context of scripture, are dreams are uh, uh, God's divine images, God's divine symbols that reveal uh, most likely uh, God's intent in the life of every human being. What does God intend to do to you is God's dream for you, is God's dream for the world. So they are images, they are symbols, you know, they are virtual symbols, they are, they are act, all right? Uh, they may even be dramatic powers, you know, dramatic reoccurrences in your life, but those are divinely inspired images and symbols that God used to reveal God's self in you, to let you know exactly what your purpose of life is all about. Wow, interesting, interesting. I think today we are going to be blessed because we will learn a lot. All right, so um, I want to lift up something from the Bible. In the Bible, we learn of this great man who had an astounding dream. Mm -hmm. This man is Joseph. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be very glad if you can share with us what you know about Joseph and then also share with us some of the dreams that he had. Um, Pastor Richard, can you please take it from there? Right. Um the account of Joseph and Jesus' dreams will be seen in the book of Genesis chapter 37. Uh, just to summarize a little bit, but we'll lift up some major, uh, crucial, or critical scriptural verses, you know, that offer understanding of Joseph's dream 
uh, that came up. In fact, when I was growing up in Sunday school, we, we called Joseph, Joseph the Dreamer. So uh, when you were a child in the home and you were always dreaming, they called you the Dreamer, Joseph the Dreamer. Mm -hmm. But Joseph is known as known for his dreams. So in the book of Genesis chapter 37, uh, uh, the dreams of Joseph, as, I mean, is, is spelled out, you know, clearly, you know, for the life of him or being. Uh, it, it, interestingly, uh, Joseph himself, Joseph had a life uh, that, that is almost like a prototype, that is almost like the type of Jesus Christ. Mm. Because Joseph was one who, who was so to pray, I mean, was so mm. uh, by his brothers. Mm. you know, uh, to become slave, you know, to, uh, to another person, another group. Like Jesus himself was so, you know, for uh, uh, some pieces of silver. Yes. So Joseph exactly was so by his brother in that same, in that same place, in that same way. And he was so exactly to another category of people, another land, mm. right? So Joseph had a very tough and a critical lifestyle. Mm. He went to teen and pains and he went to difficulty. But in the setting of the book of Genesis, through all those difficult moments, this is where Joseph's life comes to consummation. Mm. And I want to just take this time to read a little from Genesis 37 for the audience who are listening to us. Now, Genesis 37 says, uh, in verse 1, beginning verse 1, So Jacob dwelt in the land in which his father had been a stranger and sojourner in the land of Canaan. This is the history of the descendant of Jacob, and this is Jacob's line. Joseph, when he was 70 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. The lad was with the sons of Bilhad and Zilpah, his father's secondary wives. And Joseph brought to his father a bad report of them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a distinctive long tunic with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not say but peace to him or speak peaceably to him. Mm -hmm. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him mm -hmm. still more. And he said to them, listen now and hear, I pray you, this dream that I have dreamed, we were binding shields in the field, and behold, my sheep arose and stood upright, and behold, your sheep stood round about my sheep and bowed down. His brother said to him, Shall you indeed ring over us, or are you going to have us as your subjects and dominate us? Mm. And they hated him all the more for this dream mm. and for what he has said. Pastor Evan, we don't want to be able to read all the scripture, but we're going to be lifting up some very significant passages of scripture, Pastor uh, Evan and I, as we have this discussion. Right. But yes, uh, Joseph exactly uh, was that beloved son of Jacob, mm -hmm. and uh, he was born to Jacob in Jacob uh, a lot of days, I mean, in his old age. Mm -hmm. So as a result of this, exactly, uh, Joseph, who loved uh, his only son, Jacob loved his only son, uh, uh, Joseph, out of all the other children he had, uh, we don't know exactly. Sometimes theologians want to put Jacob in the, in the bench of uh, the election of God, mm -hmm. that God elected him, God favored him over all the other people. I don't want to go into that theology. Right. But what is happening exactly is that the Bible says that he was loved by his father, mm -hmm. Jacob. Wow. But this boy exactly was he was he was having a gift. Mm -hmm. he, he he had a distinct talent. He had a distinct gift that God gave to him. Mm -hmm. All right, to see images, to to have a dream and be able to reveal the dream. He heard from God through mm -hmm. dreams. So he was noted exactly for the power of God within him that transformed not just him, mm -hmm. but his brothers and the entire community in which he found himself. Mm -hmm. wow. So exactly that what we can say about Joseph. Okay, good. Pastor well, Amen, uh, can you please add something to well, what uh, Reverend Richard has already yeah, said? Yeah, Joseph was um, 17 when he began to have his dreams. So, for me, what it simply means is that the discovery of destiny should be done early. Mm. You know, and um, like I said earlier in the definition of what dreams are, let me add again that dreams are like God's kind of classified information that he gives people to give direction. Mm about where they should go, how they should go, and when they should go. And um, like Reverend just said that it was a special gift, and mm -hmm. I agree with that. Mm -hmm.
But pushing that forward is that everybody has capacity to dream. Mm. Everybody has capacity to dream. Some may be, some dreaming capacity may be, may be more blessed or maybe more, I don't see, I want to use, may be more of a gift that is beyond just the normal. But on a normal basis, on a normal day, every human being created by God is not a mistake. Mm. God had a purpose for everybody. God had a vision for everybody. Mm -hmm. God had something in his mind, specifically at the back of his mind, for creating each of the seven billion people on earth today. There's a general will of God. There's a general vision of God for humanity, you know, that you prosper and be in health, even as a source prosper. General vision that you go and multiply and replenish the earth. General vision. You know, you can read that on any pages of the of, of the Bible, general vision. But they are specific, you know, they thought that thing towards you that thought of good and not of evil to give you a hope and an expected end. General vision. But again, why those general visions are like applies to virtually everybody, they are definitive specific things that God wants you to do. Mm. And that was the case with Joseph. Now see, Joseph, God was going to make him a king. God was making go to make him a ruler. Mm. God was going to make him a preserver. Mm -hmm. of life that was his life destiny you know he said at the end of his story he said god has sent me here to preserve lives mm -hmm. god has sent him to preserve a generation that mm -hmm. was his purpose and vision mm -hmm. and that was what god was showing him mm -hmm. because said, like that was what god was showing him was showing him the first vision he had was that you know he had sheep mm -hmm. and then all the sheep his dad and his mom and his brothers then all the other sheep were bowing down to him and his own sheep was standing mm -hmm. sheep has to do with food Sheep has to do with grain, has to do with seed. Mm -hmm. And that was exactly what he went to do in Egypt eventually. Mm -hmm. I was sharing in church on Sunday. I said, again, when God wants to show you pictures and vision of the future, God will not show you things that you, you are not familiar with and you don't understand. Mm -hmm. God will use symbols and pictures of things that you are familiar with. Yeah. If, for example, you live in the riverland area, most likely God will be showing you visions that surround fish or whatever. You know, that's just my, you know, and I believe that's the way it is. You know, so Joseph was living in an agrarian community, an agrarian society where they, they, they deal with the plants and of course the stars and everything mm -hmm. and that was those, those, those were the images God was using for him mm -hmm. you know who has had dream in the Bible quickly somewhere but if God was not showing him vision of sheep mm -hmm. God was showing him it was hearing the voice of Eli the prophet with yeah. whom he was living you know something familiar you understand so it's got very simple he was 17 years old he was young he wasn't getting this vision when he was 17 years old mm -hmm. you understand that so he was young so my advice or maybe quickly the lesson we can learn from that is that nobody is too young to dream. Mm. Nobody is too young to begin to inquire about what the future is. Nobody is too young. Don't say, I'm too young. I'm so young. I'm in secondary school. I'm in high school. You know, I need to graduate from university or, you know, get the job or get a family. No. You know, you got to get it right at the beginning. Once you get it right, you know, and you, you know exactly, you will not run other people's races. Mm. You will not, you will not eat your head again the brick. You will not waste your energy. You can concentrate and focus on your path mm. and then achieve it. So it was 17. When he had that dream, wow. you know, the last thing I want to say before, mm -hmm. before, before I hand over the microphone mm -hmm. is that, you know, the Bible was talking at the beginning of that chapter 7, 37 that Reverend Richard quoted, it was talking about the story of Joseph, of Jacob. He said, this is the story of Jacob, Joseph. Mm -hmm. This is the story of Jacob. Am I correct, sir? Mm -hmm. Joseph. It looks as though the story of Jacob is not the story of Jacob until the story of Joseph is involved. Mm -hmm. Joseph is a peculiarly chosen person by God. Wow. You know, he was peculiarly chosen. The story of the family will not be complete except Joseph's story, you know, was brought to the fore. And so that's very, very, very profound. So he had his dream when he was 17, and he began to walk towards that dream since he was 17. And I encourage every young person watching or everyone that has a young person, don't talk them down, don't push them down. Don't, don't query their visions and dreams. Don't like... You know, the, the, like the parents were like, what do you mean? You mean we're going to bow to you? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 if it is God given, mm -hmm. the best you can do is to help them enhance it and support mm -hmm. them in the actualization of that dream and vision. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So, um, from the scriptural passage that uh, Reverend Johnson read, something struck me. He said, Joseph had a dream. And he narrated the dreams to his family, mm -hmm. in other words, the father and the siblings. Mm -hmm. And um, the passage says that Joseph was hated. Mm -hmm. You know, he was hated because he shared his dreams. 
And so the father even said, so do you mean myself and your mother, we are going to bow down before you? Mm. So my next question would be like this. Um, do you think it was right for Joseph to share his dream with his family? <laughs> <laughs> do you think it was right? So, who was here? Pastor Evans uh, lifted up uh, a very significant aspect of dream uh, giving or dream having or the dream experience that God uses, or God normally will use familiar images uh, within the community. Uh, he's not going to use an animal you've not seen before. So, uh, and that is very important. Uh, even though what is very different, uh, or what is what is even more extensive toward that is that the images may be familiar, but the interpretation is divine. Correct. And and that is very important. Mm. Uh, and he, he lifted that up, and that was very important. And how he he pushes, you know, uh, the audience, and, and all, how he pushes us uh, to understand that what God gives you, mm. you will have to cherish it and make sure exactly you forge ahead. Mm. And, and, and toward the point of Joseph telling the dream to his parents, I mean to his brothers, and even the father or the parent noticed exactly that you mean that even ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, was it right? Yeah, was it right to, uh, tell, to tell your dreams, dreams. to uh, people? Right, yeah. exactly. Now this question uh, is a yes and it's a no. Mm. Uh, it's a yes because the dream is God's revelation to you. Mm. It's not meant for you to keep it. it, it could, I mean, there are many places in the scripture where God spoke to people in, in dreams and in vision. And God told them exactly to get out. And their responsibility was to share. Oh yes, we've got to do that. But of course there are risks involved in telling your dreams mm. to the wrong people. Wow. If you told your dream to the wrong people, those same people could fight against your dream. Your dreams. I've had people who have had a uh, wonderful dream, dream of their future, dream of making, of accomplishing, you know, greatness in life, dream of, of making impact in society. But those dreams never came to pass mm. because they told their dream to the wrong people. Mm. So my thing is, yes, you can say it, but be mindful. There are, there are also risks involved in saying your dreams. Mm -hmm. Because there are people who also got a gift of interpreting dreams, mm -hmm. irrespective of who they are. Mm -hmm. They may not be uh, godly, but they have the gift mm -hmm. of the interpretation of the dream. Mm -hmm. Like the astrologers those days, it, it, it really does not mean that they, 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 they were godly. But that yeah. was a part of their religious tradition. Mm -hmm. That was that gifting, all right? Yeah. That was what God gave them. But then you could use it exactly and destroy your life. Mm. And I want to—I mean, I want to use this moment to talk to even those who are from our African background. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. uh, that look. But sometimes you could be that cherishing child who have had that particular dream in your family. Mm. It's not wrong to share your dream, but you gotta know exactly who you're sharing your dream with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You gotta share your dream with somebody you trust and somebody you believe. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you who you trust or who you believe. Mm. It could be your pastor, it could be your parents, mm. it could be that brother or that sister. I read or know. Mm. Uh, Joseph shared with his blood brothers. Mm. All right? Mm -hmm. they, 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 they got mad with him, they hated him for it, and they sold him to slavery. Mm. So I don't know exactly who you share it with. But it's something you got to reflect upon. And I want to be a little more evangelical and a little more spiritual, yeah. Whenever you have a dream, the best way to treat the dream is to pray about our dream. Mm -hmm. And really ask God, God, what is it you're telling me? Because sometimes we become too humanistic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we become too emotional. Sometimes we become too self-given. Alright? Mm -hmm. To respond to God's divine inspiration to us. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. We gotta be able to go back to God. God did what I saw. I do not understand this. Can you help me, God? Mm -hmm. When someone had a dream, Someone wrote, ran to uh, to Eli. Yes. Yeah. And he told Eli the dream. Yes. So for someone, Eli was his pastor. And he believed and trusted his pastor, the priest. So we're gonna be asking ourselves, who do we trust in mm. our community, in our homes, in our family? Mm. 
to right. share a dream with. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, Pastor Evan, you can share your dream. Mm -hmm. But listen, be mindful that there are risks in sharing your dream mm -hmm. because you don't know who you share your dream with. Thank you very much, um, Pastor Evan, please. Yeah, let me, let me quickly start by saying that your dream is not your fault. Yes, yeah, very clearly again. Your dream is not your fault. F A U L T. It is not your fault. Your dream is not even you. It is God's purpose for you. And I agree to maybe hundred percent with Reverend Richard. <laughs> you know, must we share your dreams? Yes. With the heart, man believes in the mouth. Confession is made unto perfection. You know, a vision you do not articulate may not come to pass. A vision, if it's a vision that God has given to you. If it lies just on the inside of you and it is not articulated, it will not come to pass. Mm. It may not come to pass. Maybe that's what I should use. So when you have a dream, part of the thing that God expects you to do with your dream is to articulate it. To give wings to it, to give life to it. And the primary and maybe the most important way of articulating and giving life to it is in the place of prayer. You got to speak it back to God. You got to declare to God. When you declare it, when you say it, when you articulate it, you know, there's a, there's a spiritual ambience, there's a spiritual air that that dream carries and then, you know, it moves in the direction of, or, you know, of, of the vision. Mm. So, I, I believe very strongly that it is very, very important that when you have a dream, mm. the dream doesn't just, but you, you, you will forget if you don't write it down and then articulate it and say it. Mm. Who do you say it to? Yeah, there are dream killers and there are dream builders. Mm -hmm. Write it down. They are dream killers and they are dream builders. Wow. Yeah. You know, when the wise men saw the vision about Jesus mm. that was born, they went to the wrong they went to Herod. Mm -hmm. Herod is a dream killer. Herod doesn't mind, mind killing every, every child in the community. Yeah. So that I can kill just one dream. Yeah. You understand? You know. So they told the wrong person mm. and thank God for, for superior dreams yeah, yeah. that was given to Joseph. Now, and even to the wise men themselves. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying again is that just to corroborate what every child is, is said. When you have a dream and a vision that God has given you, it is very, very important that you articulate it. You understand? But to whom you articulate it depends now on the direction and the leading of the Holy Spirit. You must, you must pray, you must have relationship in love with God so that you will know that you will know those with whom you can share your dreams and vision. Your dreams and visions are meant to be shared with people who are able to help you incubate it. You can incubate it, nurture it, and groom it. You don't want to share your dreams and vision with people who will be envious of you to the point of selling you to slavery, mm -hmm. to the point of killing you, to the point of destroying you. We are from Africa, to the point of going to, to talisman to do charms mm -hmm. against you. You understand? We are not afraid, but we are just telling you. Thank you very much. It is getting very interesting here. My dear friends, you are watching Ibev TV. You can like our page. You can watch us on YouTube. We are on Instagram. You can find us there. Share. What do you think? Comment on our page and on our topics. And I can assure you, you will be a blessing. I want to go for a break. When we come back, we will learn more. Family, I need you all to do me a favor. Please like and please follow. Mave TV. Listen, if you need to hear a word from the Lord, if you are overwhelmed with life and you just need to have hope uh, for the hopeless, please uh, join this broadcast. Uh, please follow on Instagram and, and Facebook and YouTube as well. This is a powerful digital community. Uh, they're shedding light to darkness. Uh, it's a, a moment where we can theologically um, reflect and Get moments of spiritual upliftment through the power of the Holy Spirit and through Jesus Christ. Come and follow uh, this powerful digital series as we continue uh, to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Hello, dear viewers. My dear friends, welcome back to MIF TV. Um, today, with me in the studio is um, Pastor. Beneza Longe and Reverend Richard D. Johnson. 
So we are having a discussion on dreams, and um, I know you are enjoying from this discussion. And um, before we went on break, there was this question that we were discussing: that was it appropriate? Was it good that Joseph narrated his dreams to his brothers or to his family? And something came up. My panelists are saying that it is good. And at the same time, it is bad. So there's this question I want to ask. The Lord has destined or the Lord has said Joseph was going to be a blessing to his family. And so Joseph dreamt and narrated the dreams to their family. So I want to ask this question. Don't you think if Joseph had not narrated this dream to his family, mm -hmm. the plan of God or the purpose of God wouldn't have come to pass? <laughs> What do you say to this question? Uh, well, for me, I, I think, um, you know, the Bible says that none unto God are all his works from the foundations of the earth. So I believe in destiny. I believe, I believe that God has a purpose for everybody. You know, I believe that, you know, God has um, a dream and a vision for everybody like we've been discussing. Um, and I believe that whatever anybody will get to in life and how one will get there, God knows. While I hold that on one hand, I also believe that man has a role, or man, woman, humanity has a role to play in the actualization of God's vision and dream for himself. So while God has the ultimate vision, God has the ultimate end, God has where one is going at the back of his mind, I believe that in between, God takes man through certain paths that is both the will of God and in cooperation with man. So, having said that, I, as the Bible has outlined to us the way the vision and the dreams of Joseph ultimately came to pass, I believe that um, perhaps that is the path that God wants him to take. You know, God wanted Joseph to land in Egypt, Egypt being the economic power of the world at that time. God knew there would be famine all over the world. And Egypt will have the technological wherewithal to be able to, you know, to to manage, you know, the scarcity and then you know feed the entire world. God knew that Israel at that time there were just three hundred people. Like it was only three hundred and ten people that left for Egypt. Mm -hmm. You understand? So mm -hmm. I believe God knew that Jacob and his family would not have the capacity on their own to be able to. And do the family that was to come. Remember the scripture I quote, I quote at the beginning. Known unto God are all these works from the foundations of the earth. He knows the end from the beginning. Egypt that time is perhaps like you know, like the America of today. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the world power. That was where the technology is. That was where everything was. Mm -hmm. You know. So I believe now, either by being sold to slavery by his brothers or by whatsoever means, I believe that Joseph will still have landed in Egypt, and he will still, by way of prophecy being a preserver of life and destiny, you know, of his family, you know, that eventually made Israel become the nation that they were, mm. you know, that they became. Then remember again that God had told Abraham a long time earlier that we will send his children, his seed, you know, into a land, mm. you know, of unknown to serve as slaves there. God had told him, told Abraham the grand, great grandfather, mm. is that correct? Mm. The great grandfather of Joseph. How that vision, how that prophecy will come to pass, we do not know. But I believe it was plain out as Joseph was going to Egypt mm -hmm. to make that thing happen. Mm -hmm. So will will Joseph still become all that he became if he didn't tell his brothers the dream? The dream mm -hmm. will he still have become all that he became if they didn't sell it to slavery? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't tell because I would not have the privilege of, of seeing the part B of the, <laughs> the alternative part of the vision. But but what we saw in that vision, Joseph needed to get to Egypt. Either by being sold or by going on scholarship or by going to ourselves, they don't need to get to that country and become all that God will have it become so that he could rescue his generations after yeah. him. That's the position. Thank you very much. So, Reverend uh, Richard, uh, what do you think? Do you think 
Joseph's dream would have come to pass if he had not told his family. And this is important, Pastor Evans. Um, when you ask the question, it reminds me about why would Joseph go through all the turmoil and the pains and the, the teens and the tears mm -hmm. to have a dream fulfilled? Mm -hmm. So it makes me understand that, hey, God got something good for you, but you have to suffer to get it. Mm -hmm. Which for me, it has, a, it has a serious implication to make those kind of statement. Why it may be real good mm -hmm. to say that, yeah, because there are promises that God gave us, but yet we suffer to get to where we have to get to. Mm -hmm. And be able to realize our dream. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's real true. But the thing that, that boiled down to me is uh, uh, the Bible voice from Exia. Uh, 55, I mean 55, verses 8 and 9. Mm -hmm. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, mm -hmm. neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Mm -hmm. As the heavens are far or higher than the earth, mm -hmm. so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Interestingly, whatever God had proposed in the life of Joseph, in as much as Joseph told his brothers, with all the hatred they brought to Joseph, Joseph still had a dream fulfilled in the end. Mm -hmm. They still bowed down to Joseph. Mm -hmm. They still went and asked Joseph a fool. I mean, they, 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 they still saw Joseph and Joseph became the prime minister of another land. Mm -hmm. All right? And mm -hmm. that is, you know, that's not, that's not, a, that's not a common life. Mm -hmm. It's not a common culture. Mm -hmm. uh, to be a citizen of this state and go to another state where I'm not a citizen of, and become an ambassador and a prime minister. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. And then my brothers came now exactly to buy food and they had to come to me. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they have to bring my father. Mm -hmm. So uh, irrespective of all of the difficulty that he went through, the challenge he went through, uh, the slavery they saw him to, yet it did not stop Joseph from having his dream fulfilled by God. Mm. So whatever way God wants to do, whatever way God wants to do through us, God can do it and nobody asks God any question. Mm. So whether God ha, 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 whether they have refused to do it, God will still fulfill the dream through his son. Mm. Whether he, I mean, uh, they, they, they became Tommy Black or they didn't become Tommy Black, whatever God wanted to do, God was going to do it. Mm. So Joseph told the dream, but Joseph did not still uh, feel the dream, Joseph fulfilled the dream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it, like uh, uh, Eben said earlier, it was, I mean, he's not responsible mm -hmm. for the dream that he had. Mm -hmm. It was it was God's own revelation, you know, for God's son and for, for, for God's word. Yes. Right, so he respected what's true in a way exactly. Joseph stayed in joy, mm -hmm. that particular blessings of God that God had promised Joseph, sent to the, uh, from Abraham, his grandfather, to Jacob, and then to him. Uh, well, if I may quickly add to that, because I mean, um, Christianity is such that we, when we say come to Jesus, we are contextualizing it now. Mm -hmm. Once you come to Jesus, everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. All your problems will be solved. You won't have any challenge again. You will have all the money you need. You will. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I say very carefully that that is a truth that is standing on one leg. You know. It is a truth that is that it, it, it is not an absolute truth. It is a truth that when you come to Jesus, your life is changed. Mm -hmm. You're a new creature. All mm -hmm. things have passed away, and all things have become new. Mm -hmm. But the same Jesus that brought the salvation says, "In this world, you will see tribulations." Mm -hmm. He said, "But you should be of good cheer." The difference between you, that is a Christian, a child of God, and the other person is that whatsoever battle you are fighting, you are not the one fighting the battle. It is God that is working in you both to do and to will of his own good pleasure whatever challenges you are going through god is there in it with you you are not fighting it alone mm -hmm. whatever battle you are facing god are not the end of that battle if you are fighting actually from the point of victory not from the point of defeat mm -hmm. so why i'm saying that is that would that dream ever come to pass without joseph passing through some kind of pains there's a popular idea that says that no gain no pain no gain even with Jesus, the Bible says that for the joy that was set before him, mm -hmm. there was a joy, there was a vision to save the whole world. Say, he endured the cross mm -hmm. and he denied himself mm -hmm. for the joy that was set before him. Mm -hmm. For Jesus to gain the whole world, mm -hmm. 
for God to win the whole world to himself, mm -hmm. he had to yank his only son, his only begotten son, of himself. But what God did was that God brought himself, he debased himself to become man on yeah. earth, yeah. to be able to rescue man from the from the fangs of the devil. Mm -hmm. So there's no there's really no no success. There's really no no dream fulfillment. Mm -hmm. I can tell you boldly, check through the scripture, A to Z. There's really no dream fulfillment without one passing through one or do mm. one challenge or the other now where the issue of who you tell your dream to now comes is that is your audio a self-inflicted audio is your audio and problem an avoidable audio and problem is it by virtue of wisdom applied in who you tell your dreams to and who you associate with mm -hmm. yes there are avoidable orders mm -hmm. but that you will just have a dream and sleep on your bed and then you will arrive at the end of the dream sir when god gives a dream God will not give you the pits in between. There are four pits between the dream that Joseph had and the palace that he found himself. Number one P was that, of course, it was hated. Then it was it was landed into the pits. Mm -hmm. That's number one P. Mm -hmm. Then he landed as a slave in Potiphar's house. Mm -hmm. That's number two P. Then he landed in the prison. That's number three P. Before he finally landed in the palace. All that God showed him in the vision was that he was seeing the palace. Not even the palace as it were, but he was seeing the end of the dream. But in between, it's like you want to become a medical doctor, like um, our brother behind the console. Mm -hmm. You want to become a medical doctor, like you just sleep and wish that you become a medical doctor and become one. You cannot become one that way. You must pass through the order of writing medical exams. You must go through school. You must see dead body. You must see cadaver. You must handle those things before you become whatever you become. So we must not lie to ourselves as believers, as Christians. No dream can come to fulfillment unless you pass through certain certain necessary passages mm -hmm. to make those dreams and visions come to pass. But remember that when you are passing through it, there is the God that gave the vision mm -hmm. who is able to make those visions come to pass, irrespective of the audio and the problems that you pass through. Interesting. All right. So um, somebody just sent me a question, and um, he will be glad um, if you can help in answering it. So he is like, we learn from Joseph's case mm. that his family hated him. Mm. So in other words, God created enemies for Joseph in order for Joseph's dream to come to pass. Mm. So does God always have to, or does God always create enemies for us? <laughs> for our purposes or for the purpose of God in our life to come to pass. Uh, I can speak, then I will speak. Thank you, Pastor Evans. Um, and I think this is a very interesting question. Uh, I am not sure that God intend for our dream will always be to experience pain. Mm. The, uh, a case in context, there are people who live in real privileged society and they have had privileged experiences all through their lifetime. Mm. And those people have not gone through the hurdles of life that's all have gone through and they're always getting what they dream about. Mm. I can name all the instances, but yes, there are still people in our society who born with a silver spoon in their mouth and they still got it in their mouth and they're still living exactly in that privileged experience. Mm. And we gotta also understand that. Mm. Uh, secondly, God is not a designer of pain for us. Mm. But God will allow, God will allow us to go through, all right, mm -hmm. uh, testing moments mm -hmm. in order to appreciate mm -hmm. the experience for the joy in the end of our dream. Mm. God is not a God who will create a suffering for us. Mm -hmm. He is not a God who was brought unto us in a moment of pain. Mm. But God do recognize that in the world we find ourselves, mm. that there are pains and there are strains and there are challenges, there are experiences that are very inhuman before us. But God is even saying that even in the face of all of these pains and challenges, mm -hmm. you gotta walk through them and you will get what you want. In Exia, he say you walk in the water and you will not be drowned. Mm. You will walk in the fire and you will not be burned. Mm. So on what end of life mm. there are pains. And God is saying, yeah, you will walk through that, mm. but you will get to your dream. Mm. But there's also another 
part of love exactly that we cannot tell. Why certain people exactly get all the need and experience the dream without going through all the hurdles we go through, mm -hmm. all right? But yet they experience what they want, they get what they need. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe probably that, that experience uh, will push us to define what suffering really is. Mm -hmm. Uh, how we define suffering, mm -hmm. right? Because for us, suffering is your 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 pants bust in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't afford to sleep in your own room. You gotta sleep with friends. Mm -hmm. It also means exactly you can't even afford the food to eat. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, uh, it also means that you, you have to walk two hours to get to school. The, for all that, how we define suffering. But other people exactly the way they define suffering is, is different. Uh, yeah. it, it's quite so we can understand the both sides of the dynamic and mm -hmm. thinking of what God is doing on both ends. Mm -hmm. But for me, I don't like to go through all the terror because I know that there will always be problems or challenges or circumstances or situations that are quite unbearable. Mm -hmm. But we need to understand that whatever God has purpose for you, mm -hmm. God will bring it to pass in your life. Right. I mean, that's how I can try yeah. my best of let, 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 me just, let me just chip in a little. I mean, Reverend Richard, I, I like the balance you are bringing into it. And again, I think this is another topic entirely. Mm -hmm. Suffering mm -hmm. in life. I, 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 I personally don't believe that. I mean, people can live life without suffering and then just live and pass through and then exist and then go. Mm -hmm. People live those kind of normal lives. Mm -hmm. But even in this society, mm -hmm. people that have made the mark, mm -hmm. the suffering, like you said, may not be the kind of suffering that we suffer, mm -hmm. may not be the kind of order that we have to pass through. Mm -hmm. People who have never suffered before, like they've never been broke before. Mm -hmm. A man that had 100 billion and then did an investment and lost. 50 billion of the other billion. I mean, the, it's looking like big money. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a suffering. Mm -hmm. It's a form of suffering. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a form of suffering. It's a form of passing through. So, for me, even if it is not the kind of, the, I mean, what we pass through differ, mm -hmm. depending on situation, location, and then the privileges that we have. Look at Prince Ari. I mean, let's come secular. Mm -hmm. Prince Ari was born with silver spoon. She was born with everything. She had everything she needed. But her mom died prematurely in an accident. Was mm -hmm. that, that, a, that a form of all, all that, that beauty who, she, who he is in him. Mm -hmm. Now he got married and he has all, all those issues in the palace. Despite the fact that they, they were born in the palace with the Queen of England. I mean, who else should suffer? Who should suffer? <laughs> Those people should not, they should not cry at all. Why yeah. should they cry? Mm -hmm. They shouldn't cry because there's no reason in the world that they are billionaires before they were born. Yeah. They were royal artists before they were born. Mm -hmm. But if, if they will amount to anything, they will become global. If we will be interested in them like we are interested in them today, they will pass through. The only they are passing through may not be that there's no milk in the fridge. No. Mm -hmm. the only, when a rich man says he's broke, mm -hmm. it may be that he has only one million dollars left in his account. Mm -hmm. He's still a form of suffering. <laughs> but when the reformer says he's broke, maybe he doesn't have one dollar. You understand? So I agree with you that there are layers. But if anybody will truly amount to anything, my, my, I believe very strongly. If anybody will amount to anything, no matter where the person is, professors here, you know, it's a hard you are passing through. You have to write paper, you have to burn the candle, you have to make applications, and that they may reject your application mm. so that they may, you may not get the kind of promotion you want, mm. or the kind of job you want, even though you're on a job that is paying you well. Mm. At your level, it's a form of suffering too. And so that is my that is my opinion to that. Then does God really create suffering for people? Mm. I don't think so. And that's what the venture to say. I believe that life largely is about cause and effect. Mm -hmm. If you have a dream that is so big and is intimidating, not because God will create a trouble for you, people will hate you. Mm. It's just cause and effect. People will fight you. If anything that's I mean, so it's not that God says, okay, now let me create a problem for him. Mm. But it's about cause and effect. If this is it. Then by virtue of this being this, this will happen. You understand? So that's my own position about it. God will not say, okay, let me now bring death, let me bring destruction, let me bring accident on this path. So I can have accident, then they can they can then no more. No, it's about cause and effect. That's my own position. All right, thank you very much. So uh, I think um, we would have been done by now, but um, somebody just sent a question um, on Facebook, and um, I want us to address it before um, we end today's show. So there's somebody who is saying that um, he believes that dreams can die. Mm. He believes that dreams can die. So uh, do you believe this? And um, if you believe it, are you able to share with us instances where our dreams can die? Well, I... I, I... <laughs> yes, dreams can die. But at the same time, I think it's perspective. Dreams may... That God showed someone a dream or something like that, that dream will essentially come to pass. Mm. But that doesn't mean that the dream died. Mm. 
Because it just means that maybe through that person that they didn't come to pass. If it's a vision from God, I believe that essentially the goal of God is that the dream should come to pass. But if, for example, the woman being that God showed that dream to didn't do, didn't do, well, I'm careful now because I'm a really theologian. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't, they didn't do the required, they didn't play his own part of the game. They didn't play, you know, I, I, God plays in this matter a lot, destiny plays mm -hmm. in this matter a lot. Mm -hmm. So God told Joseph, take this son, take this boy, take him to Egypt, mm -hmm. dream, so that Herod will not kill him. And if Joseph says, no, 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 no. How can you told us that this boy will live? I can't take him out of Egypt. Do we think that that boy will be killed? Mm -hmm. But can Jesus be killed? Mm -hmm. That's another question. Yeah. If, if for example, God told, um, um, let's go back to Joseph. Your brothers will bow to you. Mm -hmm. If Joseph went to commit suicide mm -hmm. because he now is now in the in the prison or in his Potiphar's house and like this, thing, I'm tired, and he kills himself. Well, we God say you can't kill yourself even if you decide to commit suicide mm -hmm. because your dream was come to pass at 8 30. Mm -hmm. You know, these are questions that I feel the pathologists here <laughs> we have to answer. But ultimately, I'm of the opinion that even though God gives a vision and a dream, the goal of God is that that dream should come to pass. But God has created human beings with agency. We have a will, we have a decision to make, we have the right to go the opposite direction. We have with that willpower. Man is not a tabula rasa. Mm. You understand? Mm. So if God has a will that you become a pastor, mm. must you, there's nothing you can do, you must become a pastor. Uh, maybe yes and no. Jonah, maybe, maybe Jonah must preach in the Navy. But maybe Jonah will not repent and die in the belly of the fish. I mean, I don't know. So maybe I'm not just... <laughs> All right. Yeah, interesting. I, I, quite interesting. <laughs> I, I think I want to just go back to something uh, Pastor Eben says some times back. And uh, on one end, is exactly where most uh, pastors today want to wrestle with. But it's between the whole aspect of fit and reason. Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea is struck over the idea of principle. Mm -hmm. uh, that logo, you got, uh, the miracle will come, but you have to labor the principle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, to every dream, there is a principle. Yeah. Correct. So while, while, how will Mr. Joseph ever had that dream fulfilled and accomplished mm -hmm. if Mr. Joseph did not labor the principle? Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Potiphar House. Mm. Mm. Why, if, 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 if Joseph exactly had gone out with Potiphar's wife, mm. yeah. what was going to happen to him? <laughs> of course, whatever that lady said against him, even though she was lying, mm. they still put him in the bar. Yeah. But why was he not killed? Mm. But he got in that particular prison, and he was able to still continue his gift of what? Of dreaming. And he was able to <laughs> offer interpretation of dreaming in people's life. Mm. So I'm saying that it's a principle for the dream, and dream die when we do not live by the principle. Correct. These are great men, but David would not live by the principle. Mm -hmm. And David exactly, God said, no, I'm going to have your son mm -hmm. to, come to be my temple. You will gather. Mm -hmm. Genesis, you will gather the resources, but, my, but Solomon, your son, will do it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you, you know what David did exactly against his own captain of, of the army. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that here, uh, God's dream for you will never die. Mm -hmm. But God's dream comes with principle. Mm -hmm. And if you don't live those principles, you will not be able to fulfill the dreams. I agree with you. That's uh, exactly where I am with that. It's a, it's a time, time up. There's this general story, thank you very much about that, of two people. They went to a prophet. And Prophet said, oh, you, you're going to become very, very wealthy, very, very rich. Mm -hmm. And that one was happy. Mm -hmm. They said, that one said, you, mm -hmm. you know, you only live, you can't be wealthy, you know. And the one that is prophesied over, mm -hmm. that's like a vision, mm -hmm. went home and began to enjoy and eat. The one that said, will not be wealthy, got very angry in the spirit and went to the bush. And he began to labor and work and began to build and began to build. The one that said that we become rich, became king, mm -hmm. then his country experienced famine. Mm -hmm. Then they began to go to the bush and bush, and they found the one that said we will not very well become rich. Mm -hmm. The one that said they will never become rich, I become very rich. And they said, the only way I will give you food is I will become your king. So they had to submit to him and he became their king. Now, so this is the principle of miracles and reasoning. Mm -hmm. So the church should not just sit around miracles. Mm -hmm. The church should not just, miracles is our life. Vision and dreams is our life. But 
man must understand that man has a role, or woman must understand that woman has a role to play. In, I mean, God, you don't just fold your arms mm -hmm. and do nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, when God has given the prophecy, the Bible says that we should fight a good work, fight of faith with the prophecy that has been given to us. We should wrestle with it. We should labor with it. So when you have a vision, it's a time to even actually go to work. Mm -hmm. You know, because you got to play your own part. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, nothing will happen. Nothing moves until we move. Mm -hmm. You know. So, is it possible that Joseph's dream will not come to pass? Yes. If he slept with Potiphar's wife, he will have what we call premature miracle. That woman will just say, I like this boy. They will just build one kiosk for him in front of the house. That is the end of his life. Or they send him back home and they will, they will give him four clothes. How many children do you have? Twelve. They give you twelve shots. Go and give your parents. And that's the end. You just get home earlier. They will still be happy, right? They will still celebrate. But the ultimate, the 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 zenith of God's vision for him mm -hmm. would not have come to pass. Right. Mm. Ah, interesting. Dear friends, dear viewers, I hope you have learned a lot. Any dream that you dream is possible to come to pass, but you need to be prayerful. It is good to share our dreams with other friends. But in sharing your dreams with people, check yourself. Check your spiritual strength, your growth. Ask yourself, are you that spiritual? Are you that powerful in prayer to pray? To ensure that your prayer or your dream comes to pass? Think about this. Think about this. I want to take this opportunity to thank Reverend Richard for joining us on the show today. Thank you. And then um, Pastor Iben, Ebenezer. Thank you. Yeah. They have been a blessing to us. And um, I know you enjoyed today's production. This is IMEF TV. I encourage you to keep on watching. Meet us. Same time next week. God bless you.